So let's take a look at using maps and falloffs with process. So if I just create polydisc and then add some subdivisions, add a couple more size to that, and then maybe let's do this. Um, grab a face, go right click face, and then go edit mesh poke. Get a poke face. I'm just going to set the transform to let's say five on that, and then oops. Um, with that done, see what we've got there. Um, I'm going to create a process, and then drag on the uh, disk here, and then we get the history op uh, option, so um, history list, so let's just choose polypoke, hit continue, what we can do, you know, you can choose modulus, whatever you wanted to do, um, but let's look at um, using a shader, so what we can do is we can add or remove sh shaders um, from the uh, components, so um, in this case we want to add, so we want to let's just grab a noise shader, and then let's um, just turn the frequency down to something like one. And then if I wind time forward, I'm just going to maybe reduce the uh, reduce the amplitude there. And then if I just animate time, we get this cool effect. So we can um, we can make this slightly more interesting. It's not actually using a process, but if I create a texture deformer, oops, set the mesh, create a texture deformer, uh, what I can do is if I go into the node editor and then just map the process, you can actually just find this by turning off dag only objects and going and finding this noise shader here. Um, but uh, in the node editor, you can just map the graph, the process uh, by sh uh, clicking the show input out Put connections button here and then you get the noise shader there and then if we just go onto the texture deformer uh, we can uh, drag the noise onto the texture here and then let's just set this to something like five or something like that and then maybe 10 make it more obvious and then if we go into the shader itself and we animate this the actual mesh will change as well so then you can change how much of that mesh gets. That's pretty cool. So even cooler if you smooth it. So there you go. Um, yeah, so that is um, using maps at least. So how do you use a fall off? So on the pro set, we can just open this uh, fall off roll down and we can just go add. So as soon as we do that, um, I'm just going to turn off smoothing on this just to save my machine. And then if I scale up the fall off, you see it's underneath here. If I move it around, ah yes, the fall off will be affecting the underlying mesh, of course, because the deform is happening after the fall off. So we can move that around and add the components that are inside the fall off like so. We can choose the fall off shape so we can have a cube as well. Which can be non-uniform. And of course we can also use nerb scales, particles and meshes. So as an example of that, if I was to disconnect the noise from this, let's just turn off the deformer. If I was to grab a torus, and let's say I was to scale that up, just make the section radius like so, what I could do on the fall off node here is if I roll down connections, I can drag that torus into the shape section here and then all of the components that are near the uh, surface of the torus will be affected. So in this situation, you can see there's a little ring missing, but I can just remedy that just by squashing that torus down. There you go. And then yeah, move that around. And then you've got a torus that is um, affecting the component selection on another mesh, which is pretty fun. So that's how you use uh, fall off some maps with process.